very pleased and proud to be here today. It's kind of honor for me, and I have to say I already put the announcement from your website on my Facebook. It, it is kind of honor, really. I would like to thank also the uh, Ad Hoc International Coalition uh, to arrest Radko Mladic that actually uh, helped me to come here today and who lobbied for my presentation both today and the other one which I'm going to deliver the day after tomorrow in the Parliamentary Committee for just European on that, we, Affairs. Yeah, just on that, uh, we should thank Valerie Hughes who's with us as always because she had a, a lot to do with this and we almost take Valerie's contribution for granted because she provides us with um, interesting names and interesting opportunities so thanks for that sorry i'm really really uh, uh, deeply convinced that their work along with the persistency uh, shown by the netherlands government and your parliament uh, and in persisting to uh, keep uh, the issue of arrest of Ratko Mladic high on the agenda really contributed to the fact that Serbia finally arrested not only Ratko Mladic but another remaining fugitive, Goran Hadric, and that they are now safely in the ICTY, which is really a good news coming from Serbia. But nevertheless, this is not the end of business and end of the road. This is just the fact that we have removed one big roadblock uh, uh, on our path towards the EU, and this is what I'm going to talk about today. I suppose that most of you are familiar, more or less, with the findings of the European Commission uh, um, presented in their progress report for Serbia in year 2000, uh, for year 2010. I will shortly remind you about that. I will then speak in a little bit more details on some issues that I think haven't been so far so thoroughly covered by the Commission, and my suggestion is that they should as well, and how these issues, particularly the gaps in the security sector reform in Serbia, influence some important issues that I then again suggest and offer to European Commissions and Member States uh, <coughs> to consider a while they deliberate whether Serbia should be granted candidacy status or not. So uh, 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 these three issues that are actually influenced by the gaps in Serbian security um, <coughs> reform are a genuine willingness and commitment of Serbia <coughs> to uh, regional um, reconciliation and then further cooperation, its willingness and capability to uh, exchange policies towards Bosnia and Kosovo. Uh, but first, uh, 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 let me remind you on some main findings of the European Commission for Serbia. Overarching problems are uh, uh, poor law enforcement in Serbia. That is a huge, persistent problem that actually affects many other topics in Serbia. Uh, which is uh, uh, caused by still uh, developed and uh, uh, fragile institutions, of course. Another big problem that the European Commission highlights is corruption and uh, um, fight uh, against organized crime. The Commission actually highlights as a topic that should be continued, but they have even some uh, uh, compliments for the achievements made so far. Uh, with regard to the fight, uh, against corruption, um, I would say that maybe the European Commission uh, tends to be sometimes too uh, legally optimistic uh, and that the solutions it offers uh, uh, tends to be, let's introduce more and more regulatory body or more and more agencies instead of maybe being more focused on uh, what's going on with the laws that have been implemented so far, uh, uh, adopted, sorry, adopted so far, whether they are implemented properly, whether all remaining bylaws uh, and additional acts uh, that enable actually their uh, uh, usage are in place. Of course, after the, the, the last year's uh, 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 Serbian big failure in the Permanent Court of Justice and the agreement between our President Boris Tadic and uh, High Representative Ms. Catherine Ashton, uh, the issue of negotiation with Pristina became a part of, part of the Commission conditionality for this year's uh, report. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, our politicians uh, uh, conveniently tend to forget when they explain to Serbians uh, what are expectations from the EU. Sometimes they uh, uh, 
uh, present them as new, additional, unexpected conditions, which then uh, affect uh, Serbian public support for the EU integration, and I think this is uh, not uh, good news. Uh, of course, another overarching problem is uh, severely challenged judiciary reform. Uh, the process of judicial reform in Serbia has started, I would say, in 2006 and 7, and at that time, the EU member states and the EU institutions were just tiptoeing around Kustunica's, uh, our former Prime Minister, mm -hmm. Vojislav Kustunica government, for not making a military intervention once when Kosovo declares its independence. So they were at the time willing to turn a blind eye on, on, on the quality and, and, and uh, 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 substance in, of this judicial reform, and then it uh, kind of kicked us all back. Uh, uh, and I think that the European Commission, ever since the year 2009, has more clear and objective uh, uh, saying on where the problem is, what should be done now. Some of the laws are, are called off, uh, new proposals are, are, are considered, uh, the process is kind of back on track, but still it is an early stage and it, uh, there is a really room for, for, for much more job and there is a need for that. So uh, uh, I will speak today in more detail on the gaps in Serbian security sector reform. And when I refer to security sector, I don't refer only to armed forces. I refer to police, to customs, to intelligence services, and to Department of Justice as an overall, uh, 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 as an overall body, so to say and of course private security agencies. Uh, a lot of progress have been done uh, in these uh, fields. I mean, sometimes we tend to be very critical but uh, and to forget where we started from, you know. And we started uh, uh, from, I think, a huge uh, uh, war crime uh, <coughs> perpetrators in our ranks when we uh, got to mm. power in year 2000. And there are some things that we should always bear in mind when we evaluate uh, uh, progress in Serbian security sector reform. Uh, I will now briefly highlight some um, circumstances that uh, uh, give the context in which this uh, security sector reform uh, is, uh, has been conducted so far. Uh, apart from the huge war crimes uh, 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 backlog, uh, I mean these crimes are committed by somebody and these somebodies are mostly still in our ranks, unfortunately. Another, uh, uh, I think, circumstance that uh, uh, shapes uh, the, the condition in which Serbian security sector reforms uh, are conducted is the fact that contrary to other Eastern, Eastern European countries uh, in the 90s and contrary to most of the countries of the Western Balkans, these days uh, Serbia is not in the process of NATO integration. You, reasons are numerous, but nevertheless, this process of NATO integration actually played a complementary role to the process in, of EU integration for these countries, covering uh, some security sector uh, reform aspects, uh, because also maybe it is easier to become a member of NATO, as you know, or uh, 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 still you have to meet some uh, uh, requirements related to security sector, and NATO integration process was a uh, guidelines uh, in that aspect for uh, other countries of the Eastern Europe and Western Balkans. With Serbia, this is not the case. Uh, uh, still, uh, there have been some progress uh, uh, recently <coughs> in terms of introducing some NATO standards uh, uh, in our armed forces, but these standards are more related to capabilities and, uh, uh, and this kind of military businesses, but they are not related to the dem civilian and democratic control, for example, of the system, whether the system is uh, uh, um, well embedded uh, um, and whether the uh, legislation of the different fields of sectors are, are harmonized and so on and so on. Uh, there are uh, several individual countries' efforts to help us uh, reduce the number of troops. We uh, got this year finally a professional army, which is good news. We significantly downsized it and it became professional. Um, leaders in these uh, 
assistance are Norway and United States, um, and there are some uh, intergovernmental organizations like the OSC that are pushing for some other aspects of reforms in other sectors of the security sector, mostly in the police. They have helped us uh, uh, introduce more multi-ethnic police, for example, in the southern parts of Serbia. Uh, they help Serbia educate and train its police staff to be more sensible towards um, uh, a challenging issue and so on. But still, uh, experts say that uh, comprehensive uh, uh, reform in Serbian police hasn't started yet. Nevertheless, uh, uh, Serbian police officials were very keen uh, and efficient in implementing all the legislation and conditions needed uh, for Serbia to get a visa-free regime with the EU, which is also... Uh, 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 a good news. Nevertheless, uh, uh, there is room for much more uh, thorough and in-depth uh, reforms. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, EU Commission uh, gives just a small portion uh, uh, of, of uh, its report to this very important topic. And they uh, found out that uh, democratic oversight, particularly of the military agencies, is something that can be uh, improved. Of course, uh, uh, the EU Commission uh, does cover many important aspects of the security sector, one way or another. I have already mentioned they are now finally properly involved in Serbian uh, judiciary reform. They cover up what's mm -hmm. going on in police. They are supporting uh, and demanding, actually, uh, a stronger role of the Serbian parliament in the oversight of the forces and agencies. But there is no comprehensive approach as we have in, for example, fight against corruption or in agriculture, etc. And I think that this is the missing link that uh, 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 um, the EU can uh, 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 bridge uh, by combining more thoroughly its enlargement policy with its uh, uh, common uh, security and defense policy. Another, I think, uh, positive development in Serbia these days is willingness of Serbian uh, uh, government to take uh, part in several EU-led missions around the world along with some UN missions. This is another chain channel for communication and for improved uh, involvement of the EU uh, uh, in this uh, respect. Nevertheless, the problem is personnel. Uh, as I have already said, uh, 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 we have downsized our professional army, but it was based on conscript, but the uh, uh, ranks, commanding ranks, are still the same, more or less. Uh, uh, same goes for the police, for the uh, intelligence agencies. Uh, 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 I openly state that, uh, that the ICTY, the Hague Tribunal, was the best reformer of the Serbian security sector so far, simply because, thanks to the existence of the ICTY and our obligation to cooperate with it, we delivered at least some of the culprits uh, there and removed them from the structure. Uh, uh, others, if they have retired, they ended up uh, in uh, pretty controversial political parties, still very nationalistically oriented, or are in a very poorly regulated private security sector in Serbia. Another issue that I think the uh, European Commission and member states should pay a proper attention to. It is not only my uh, uh, a remark, uh, uh, expert organizations like the Geneva Center for Democratic Control of Armed Forces, OSCE, and many other uh, uh, reputable organizations who are dealing with these uh, topics find the problem of, of very poorly regulated security sector in Serbia as a big one. Again, bearing in mind the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, some of their members uh, have a very, very nasty, so to say, background and uh, due to their participation in, 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 in wars in the 90s. Uh, Serbia, as you know, presented the candidacy bid on, in year 2009, and then it was obliged to uh, fill in the questionnaire that the European Commission provided. Uh, and I think this questionnaire is very useful uh, material, uh, 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 background material, for everyone who wants to go into more detail to see uh, whether the institution building and strengthening processes is working in a good direction, etc. 
the Serbian government uh, 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 recognized some problems uh, uh, in uh, control really of, of military agencies in particular, and I think it is a good news that it recognizes the problem, but uh, let's see uh, what will happen, whether the problem will be resolved uh, soon. There are two schools of uh, 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 thinking, so to say, uh, why, why is the reason that Serbian Parliamentary Committee for Security and Defense Affairs uh, was, has not been exercising its mandate for so long. Uh, one school of thinking says that uh, the reason is a lack of the capacity and knowledge of the MPs who are members of this uh, uh, very committee, which even uh, under the existing legislation has certain power uh, to oversight, not maybe financial aspects of the intelligence agency work, but uh, uh, some other aspects, mm -hmm. yes, they, it has. Another school of uh, thinking, and I belong to this one, is that uh, Serbian uh, ruling elite is not willing to introduce genuine democratic and civic oversight. Uh, what, whether they are afraid of it, whether they are aware that they will face certain resistance or not, this is another issue. Uh, uh, and that instead of introducing proper democratic and civilian control with a very significant role of parliament and parliamentary committees and very good and stable uh, judiciary, uh, uh, they tend to uh, use uh, uh, shortcuts and to impose actually party control of the existing uh, uh, structures, which is not the good news. Uh, uh, the reason I belong to this school of thinking is the fact that until only recently, Serbian political parties were owners of the Serbian MPs' mandates in parliament. Uh, 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 so if you are elected to become a member uh, of the parliament in Serbia, you are obliged by your party headquarters to submit a blind uh, resignation that the party can use whenever it suits it. Uh, thankfully, due to a very persistent uh, uh, pressure um, from the EU member states mm -hmm. and from the Commission, this uh, piece of legislation has been um, uh, recently exchanged, uh, which now the situation now is that Serbian MPs have s more room to be individuals and to have their own thinking on some affairs, despite on what the party headquarters think. But, uh, this is still a compromising solution because of our election and um, legislation and constitution deprived us from introducing better solution, but the EU is content uh, with, the, the, with what we have came up with so far. And I think that the good news is that Serbia only yesterday adopted two uh, very big and important remaining pieces of legislation uh, which the Commission uh, presented as a condition uh, related to retribution of private property and ownership of uh, uh, a public, uh, uh, on public uh, 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 companies. Another uh, uh, overarching uh, theme that is impeding not only Serbian security sector reform, but I would say all other reforms in Serbia, is that policy towards Kosovo is dominating everything else in Serbia, all other policies in Serbia. Uh, uh, again, judiciary reform and policy over Kosovo. These are two more, most important, I would say, uh, 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 contributors to the circumstances in which security sector reform have been uh, going on so far, along, of course, with the presence of uh, uh, so many uh, uh, people who participated in wars in the 90s uh, uh, and most likely did commit war crimes. So uh, uh, this situation with certain gaps in a security sector reform, with the lack of harmonized legislation between certain fields of the security sector, along with the overall problem that Serbia has, and that is the poor law enforcement, is a, a situation in which uh, uh, some people within the security sector or some political elites through this unreformed security sector actually uh, contribute most to a uh, Serbian approach towards the region, Serbian approach towards the uh, uh, reconciliation, and 
more specifically towards Bosnia and Kosovo. I will speak today a little bit more about uh, Serbian policies towards Bosnia and Kosovo because they are also in the focus of member states now and the commission related to our uh, uh, candidacy bid. But I would uh, uh, like to remind you that there are open issues between Serbia and Montenegro as well. Uh, how Serbia treat, uh, treats the independence of Montenegro, how we see uh, uh, their uh, legitimate uh, uh, attempts to create some symbols and, and, and to add to their identity. And uh, I think that there is a significant distinction be between uh, how Serbia and why Serbia treats uh, Kosovo and Bosnia and uh, who is actually behind the scene towards policy in, on Montenegro. I think that when it comes to Montenegro, uh, the church, Serbian Orthodox Church, uh, nationalistic intellectual elite still have an upper hand. Whereas in cases of Bosnia and Kosovo, unreformed security structure and personnel in them uh, it has a leading role. And I, this is why I would like to highlight how important it is to consider the role of security sector reform these days in our policies towards Bosnia and Kosovo. Simply, it is my impression actually that uh, uh, we read and know a bit more on how, for example, some uh, academia people influence uh, a policy towards Bosnia or how nationalistic leaders uh, shape our policy towards Kosovo, and that this subject on how these uh, structures and the fact that our security sector reform somehow fall between the cracks uh, 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 of the EU and member states' attention contribute to these policies. As I have mentioned earlier, it is really a big news that, that, that Serbia arrested Ratko Mladic and Goran Hadžić. But we can't forget the fact that they've been uh, inaccessible to justice for so long. And that they did, they were arrested at the end of the day in Serbia. So I think it would be very dangerous for the credibility of the EU, for, for reconciliation process, to put aside the issue of who have been and how supporting Ratko Mladic and others for so long. After the initial cheers uh, for Serbia, it seems to me that almost every other member state has forgotten about this issue and that the only actor in, in a public arena who speaks properly about it is again ICT Vibe and they are current uh, chief prosecutor, Mr. Serge Gramerts. It is very important that I think for that it is very important that he receives uh, support by the Commission and, and by European Council and member states for his demands uh, uh, that Serbia has to come out with the facts uh, about that. He reiterated only a few days uh, ago in Belgrade that this is not a new condition. As I have already mentioned, Serbian uh, leading uh, uh, elite uh, tend to present some of the existing condition as a new conditions, that something very unfair is happening against Serbia, that everyone who is against us is kind of introducing new and new conditions. Where Mr. Bramert said uh, very frankly that this is a part of Torov and full cooperation with ICTY and that it assumes that Serbia should investigate uh, who and how uh, have been supporting Ratko Mladic for so long. In that respect, I would like to, to inform you that I think the role of the United States can sometimes be uh, controversial. They are uh, a minister of foreign, they are state secretary, Mr. Clinton, um, uh, during her visit uh, uh, to Serbia, said that the best part of bilateral relation between Serbia and United States is military cooperation. And all, all evidences point to the direction that the military was the agent of provision of support of SHIELD for Ratko Mladic and, and, and Hadric and others. So it, and of course they boost up their, our current Minister of Foreign <coughs> Defense to I think a level which he doesn't uh, uh, deserve simply because uh, <laughs> of this elephant in the room. Uh, uh, he recently, immediately after the arrests, uh, he announced a very short uh, uh, internal investigation. So the army uh, 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 investigated itself whether it uh, supported Ratko Mladic or not. 
Uh, and this investigation lasted like a, for, for 10 days and they announced that according to them, they didn't have any kind of contacts with ICTY fugitives ever since year 2002. This is a little bit controversial and I, I think that the European Commission should bear that in mind and persist on external and more thorough uh, uh, investigation into that. Uh, uh, this fact, I think, uh, impedes Serbian genuine approach towards uh, regional reconciliation. For me, attitude towards the ICTI, uh, 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 acceptance of the rulings of the ICTI are the best uh, indicators of Serbian commitment to the regional cooperation. Everything else is just lip service. Without replacement of certain remaining personnel in our ranks and without acknowledgement that it was Serbian institutions, not only individuals, but institutions at the time who committed all these crimes, I think we are not going to make further uh, a progress that can be substantial. These same structures are more or less creating our policy towards Kosovo. Uh, in the days before my uh, visit to the island, a uh, um, lot of have been going in North Kosovo, and the Western international community is speculating to what exist, uh, level uh, Serbi Belgrade controls events in North Kosovo, or whether these events are self-driven or controlled by Serbian opposition. The trigger for the chain of events which have started in July this year was the attempt of the Kosovo Police Service and uh, EU um, civilian mission in Kosovo, uh, EULEX, uh, which is in charge for the implementation of rule of law, was uh, their attempt to try and to replace uh, Serbian uh, uh, members of the Kosovo Police Service with another shift, again with Serbians, but with another shift. And there is, it's, it's a public knowledge that uh, most of Serbians members of the Kosovo Police Service are actually in the same time communicated with Serbian Ministry of Interior in Belgrade and either they rejected order to, to, to step back or actually they fulfilled the orders by Serbian Ministry of Interior to reject uh, Kosovo Police Service and, and EOLEX attempt to make the shuffle. So this is something that shouldn't be forgotten. Uh, uh, God bless Wikileaks. I know that it is embarrassing in many aspects, but uh, once when it is out there, it is really very useful. Uh, uh, I recently read that our Minister of Defense uh, in year 2007 said that he thinks that there are at least 200 active members of Serbian police that should be monitored and that they actually have a very, very uh, long and heavy track record of their activities in Kosovo and that they are still uh, 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 in service. So I think that uh, uh, policy in Kosovo is not only dominated by meets, by Serbian rejection to uh, assume some kind of responsibility for the events of 98, 99, etc., etc., but that right now when it is whether we shall get a candidacy status or not, that it is now heavily influenced by do those who are afraid of Serbian further progress towards the EU because they understand that that will mean uh, stronger, better institutions and that more access to justice in the forthcoming period and more, hopefully, control over the security sector. And it is them within the military intelligence, within the military security structure, <coughs> civilian intelligence agency, in police, who are drastically shaping our policy. I hear uh, uh, some comments over there. Let me give you another example, uh, uh, com confirmation of my thesis. Uh, on October the 2nd, Serbia should, uh, gay activists in Serbia are going to try to organize yet another uh, pride parade. Uh, there were three failure attempts in year 2001, 2004, and 2009, I think, and we managed to organize one last year, but the, uh, uh, the turmoil uh, that was, the violence that was created by nationalist uh, 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 organizations and their units, which I call paramilitary units, was really threatening. And uh, unfortunately, our judiciary and uh, prosecution uh, uh, bodies have failed to synchronize their work, and only just a handful of those uh, perpetrators were arrested. And now our Minister of Interior uses the security concerns as the biggest argument against this year 
parade. Instead of providing security and going after those who've been seen on cameras that they were committing violence, uh, uh, they say that the people who want to organize the parade are those who are creating insecurity and tensions in society. Unfortunately, several syndicates of Serbian police gave statements uh, um, in recent days stating that they don't want to assist uh, in uh, 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 provision of security for the members of the parade, which is against their job description. And some experts for security in Serbia tend to call it crawling crew, that there is actually no uh, structured uh, uh, um, message that can be sent from the top below, that they reject uh, uh, their uh, uh, obligations, which is a very sensible issue. I think uh, that the international community also should pay attention to. Uh, on roadblocks uh, nowadays in North Kosovo, uh, I suppose that you are all familiar with what's going on. Uh, I dare say that uh, right now Serbian government do not control all the aspects and can't simply control all the events in North Kosovo, but it is no doubt responsible for not uh, 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 trying to explain to citizens of North Kosovo in advance what is most likely going to happen <laughs> and what uh, 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 conditions from the Western international community going to be. I think that the uh, recent visit of German Chancellor Ms. Uh, Angela Merkel to Serbia was very useful for Serbia. Uh, it came as a shock to some, and I think that uh, whoever admitted that it was a shock for them should stop, resign from their jobs, whether they were journalists or analysts or statesmen, because she actually didn't say nothing new. She just put it together and phrased it properly and directly. Uh, uh, she called off for the dismantle of uh, parallel structures, uh, but she never referred to health and uh, uh, educational structures. So I think it is very important to send this message to people in North Kosovo that uh, uh, they would uh, still remain linked to Serbia at least through these two uh, 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 services that uh, she was referring only to those services who are giving kind of sovereignty to, to, to impose the rule of law. On Bosnia, uh, situation is, uh, I would say, still very uh, uh, complex. Serbian official position is, of course, that we highly respect and cherish the unity of Bosnia and Herzegovina. While, as in reality, it is not always the case. Of course, that the rest of Ratko Mladic is a good step ahead. Of course, that the uh, visit of our President Mr. Tadic to Srebrenica last year was a welcome guest. But still, there are too many dots when connected which can maybe uh, uh, indicate that uh, our policy towards Kosovo has one face for the international public and other actually face in reality. Uh, our Minister of Interior only recently uh, recommended partition on Kosovo and Bosnia as, uh, uh, as a resolution of current style made in a consolidation of democracies in the region. And oddly enough, or not, he was not uh, 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 warned or sanctioned by our either prime minister or president. Our minister on foreign affairs uh, met uh, president of Republika Srpska, this is just one entity of BH, mm -hmm. on several occasions in presence of third party uh, 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 statesmen without representatives of federation. Okay, we can't expect to have representatives of the federal state if the government is not in place, but nevertheless, but we also should think about why are Russian and Italian uh, uh, governments ready to make this kind uh, uh, of gestures as well. Our Minister of uh, Defense really very well uh, placed uh, uh, and seen as a reformer among uh, Americans uh, um, commented the uh, uh, first instance sentence of uh, General uh, Perisic uh, which was delivered, uh, let's say, a month ago in the ICTY. Uh, he was the commander of Serbian uh, army uh, at the time, uh, uh, that we should stop trials in Hague. She, he was not referring to new indictments. We all know that there are not going to be new indictments, but he was very directly referring that we should terminate all the existing trials, that they are just confusing public and contributing to uh, a less uh, a reconciliation, not to more. And don't forget, it is not just the trial 
uh, against uh, uh, Karadzic that is already ongoing and the trial now against Mladic. It is also a trial against two notorious uh, uh, um, heads of Serbian intelligence service during the wartime, uh, Simatovic and Stanisic. And the uh, findings in these two cases can severely um, compromise uh, some of the characters in Serbian, uh, still active in Serbian ranks of the security uh, sector. Now, uh, that would be... Yes, yes, in a minute. Uh, 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 against all this uh, information that I have provided, one would say, well, Serbia doesn't deserve candidacy status. There are so many open issues. But I think, and I'm really deeply convinced, that Serbia should be given the candidacy status, and then that the, uh, the date of negotiation should be uh, very, very uh, thoroughly conditioned and well articulated. Along with that, the role of the EU in this period, the interests of the EU should be much bigger. It should not really reduce to Kosovo as a political aspect and technicalities. Uh, 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 when I say technicalities, I refer to adoption of laws. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, it will, if Serbia does not get a candidacy status, it would severely affect the, the public support for the EU integration. It is already uh, just slightly above 30%. Okay, it is understandable. This is a process of transition and EU integration combined that already lasts for so long, and the economic crisis contributed to that, and uh, our disputes uh, with the EU um, on Kosovo, etc. Uh, uh, without uh, public support, I doubt that even those parties who are in favor of, of the EU integration can do a lot. Uh, 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 and then we would actually lose uh, all connection with the EU. And then the EU would lose leverage over us. The best leverage that EU has, despite the financial crisis and, and, and sovereign debts, is actually money, I would say. So uh, I think that Serbia should be uh, given a candidacy status, of course, if something very uh, nasty don't happen in the forthcoming period, either in Belgrade mm. during the Pride Parade or in North Kosovo, and of course if the talks, uh, uh, this new round of talks between uh, Belgrade and Pristina, uh, which are scheduled for today, uh, 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 go in a, in a good direction. Uh, I think that this would be also useful for the EU. I think that the uh, uh, EU still has uh, to uh, convince uh, some other global players that it is capable of transforming certain region and bring it to uh, stability in full, and that uh, good closure and one good success story as the Western Balkans uh, 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 can contribute to the EU position in the world arena, particularly bearing in mind uh, recent events in North Africa and in Middle East. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for your attention. I am now really willing to answer all the questions you may ask as long as I'm capable.